So now in this video, we're going to look at the 4050, 4050, however you say it, integrated circuit from this uh, kit there. There's the one there. And uh, this is a non-inverting buffer integrated circuit. Right above there, the 4049, right here is an inverting integrated circuit. And otherwise, the pin layout is the same. So I'm not going to draw up a new diagram for the 4050. The uh, pin layout's the same, and so using the notation that I used here, it w I would not change that. I would just write 4050, and I would get rid of the dots on there. The uh, dots on top of the uh, triangle indicate that the output is in inverted from the input. So you give a low input, you'll have a high output. High input, low output. The buffer doesn't have that dot, and uh, you just have the triangle. And so a low input, low output. High input, high output. That's the difference. So no point uh, drawing up a new schematic. So there you can see we got pin number one to the positive side of the power supply. I got five volts right now. Pin number eight to the negative side of the power supply. That's the same for the 4050, which we have right there. You notice pin number two is the output pin. Pin number three is the input pin for that buffer. That's the one we're gonna use in this video. So we don't really need to look at this anymore. There are five more that we could use, but uh, here we will zoom in. You can see that uh, we have a jumper to that top pin, pin number one, to the positive rail. Right below it, a resistor, because this is the output 220 ohm resistor to the long lead, the anode of an LED. Right there, short lead the cathode going to the uh, negative rail, right there. And right now the trim pot is closer to the negative rail there. This is a 10 kilo ohm trim pot. And so there's a pin under there that we connect to the positive rail, a resistive element around here to another pin down there, which we have a jumper going to the negative rail. There's a middle pin connected to this wiper, which slides across that resistive element, gives us a fraction of the power supply voltage, which goes to pin number three. Now pin number three doesn't need any current it just looks at the voltage that is being applied to it. So I'm using a 10 kilo ohm resistor. I can use a higher value or a lower value. Doesn't matter. Just remember whatever its resistance is. If it's lower, more current will flow through it for no reason really. And it'll get a little warmer. It's wasting energy. But uh, so you can use a higher value resistor. I don't know, or trim pot. I don't know when you're getting too high. But in any case, you don't have to try to stay low. The input's not going to throw off the uh, voltage. So, in any case, we'll pull back. You can see we got the power supply to five volts right there. I'm gonna turn the trim pot. You can see it's more negative, and this is not showing any current right now. Maybe it is up to one milliamp. This isn't completely accurate, but it's pretty close. And uh, so I can go more negative, and you, know, you see nothing changes. Now we get a little more than halfway, just a speck. It looks like it's halfway, but uh, the output is high right now and uh, I keep turning it up. The LED does not get brighter and more current does not flow. So now, at least for a high output, we uh, are not getting as much current as I would expect with uh, this circuit. So I'm going to uh, zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna yank the resistor there and uh, we do get five volts at the output but there's resistance at the output there's impedance I should say somewhere in there so you can see now we went from 4 milliamps to about 13 milliamps and the integrated circuit itself is not using any power so in case I'm gonna go back to the output there and uh, we can also quickly let's put uh, this to the positive rail right there the LED right there and look at the output when we go low maybe when it goes low it does go to the negative rail right there so right now the outputs high but so is this side of the load so we're gonna turn the trim pot towards more negative and now you can see it's on because we uh, are positive there and it's negative at the output and uh, so LEDs on we have more current in this direction 
and uh, so I, I have this limited to a maximum of 30 milliamps of current we're still nowhere near there so so we're good to go right there and so I'm gonna go back to the original position that was just a quick demonstration to look at that and there we got the uh, LED 4 milliamps of current so now next thing we're using 5 volts right now this particular integrated circuit the 4050 and the 4049 right there I have one data sheet that I found where it showed both of those on the same data sheet which is really interesting and most of their uh, stats are uh, pretty much the same I can't think of a better word for that right now but uh, most of the properties of the integrated uh, circuit are about the same so one of the things it says is there has a voltage range of 3 to 18 volts so 5 volts isn't working for whatever reason not all integrated circuits can go this high but I'm going to go up to 9 volts because you can see with the uh, limited current at the output it's not limited to 4 milliamps now we got 18 milliamps it looks like going through it but how much current it will output does depend on voltage you're providing to the circuit and uh, so if uh, I had a higher value resistor here to protect the LED we could get up to 18 volts that's still within the uh, recommended range of operation a lot of these integrated circuits that look like this you are stuck pretty close to 5 volts you can waver a little bit but uh, some of them like maybe 7 volts maximum and 3 volts minimum and uh, and whatnot so we have uh, that out of the way so let's take an actual measurement with the voltmeter because as I said there is pretty clearly and they, they do have a schematic for it so you can review the schematic and see why you uh, get some of the properties that you do but in any case first let's yank the resistor and so we consider high in this case because we have 5 volts at the power supply we can measure that really quick so we consider a high output as being 5 volts so I'm going to carefully go to a pin 2 right there and there you can see we have 5 volts but that's without a load so there is impedance in there but uh, the multimeter has tons of resistance or impedance that connected to the positive rail right there now it's to the output so there's impedance in there and when we come here you can see now it's pulled the voltage down to about three volts so that's just something to be aware of it's not connecting directly to the positive rail right there and it looked like even when we reversed the load we were closer to the negative rail when we are at the negative rail but it wasn't completely there because we saw we got 13 milliamps just going rail to rail and when we went positive here to a low output when we set the output low like this the LED was lit and this was saying 10 milliamps still wasn't saying 13 so you don't get rail to rail voltage well you do if there's no load but a load will pull it down you're not connecting directly to the rail with uh, this buffer so that may be a problem that may not be a problem uh, it's just something to be aware of well you're learning electronics and uh, so in any case this is a new integrated circuit for me I'm still learning about it so I'm just doing these uh, basic learning electronic videos uh, keep studying and you'll learn a lot more so in any case that's it thanks for watching I will see you in the next video